Hello everyone, my name is Jerly Marasoyana and for today's agenda, we're going to discuss the Marple 73-78 and its brief history and the six annexes. So what is Marple? Marple 73-78 is the international convention for the, for the prevention of pollution from ships and its most dominant international marine convention created by the International Maritime Organization which is also known as IMO, in order to prevent pollution from ships, which may manifest as a result of both accidental and um, operational ca causes. So when you say accidental, it includes collision and grounding. And when you say um, operational, it includes the cargo, uh, the cleaning of cargo residues, ballasting cargo tanks, bilge cleaning, and tank cleaning. Marple 7378 is not only the key convention protecting the marine environment, but it also protects um, the atmosphere from pollution by ships. And next is the, the history, the brief history of Marple 7378. In the year 1954, IMO implemented oil pool. And the 1967, the wreck of Torrey Canyon sparked controversies which dumped almost um, 120,000 tons of oil into the English Channel and resulted and resulted in a series of convention including further amendments to the 1954 convention which were adopted in 1969 next is the 1971 the international convention for the prevention of pollution of the sea by oil which is oil pool was amended again however it was generally felt that the entire new instrument was required to control pollution of the seas by ships year 1973 the imo convened a major conference to discuss the whole problem of the marine pollution by ships it resulted in the adoption of the first ever comprehensive anti-pollution convention and the international convention for the prevention of pollution from ships and marple was born with objective of minimizing pollution of the oceans and seas and to preserve the marine environment next is the 1978 wherein the imo convened a conference of anchor safety and pollution prevention which adopted a protocol to the 1973 marple convention introducing further and stricter measures which included um, requirements for certain operational techniques and number of modified constructional requirements. This combined instrument is commonly referred as Marple 7378 and it came into effect, effect in October 2, 1983. Next is the year 1989 which despite of all the great efforts of Marple, there is another disas oil disaster which happened in 1989, which is the Exxon Valdez run aground uh, the Blay Reef in the Prince William Sound, spilling an estimated 250,000 barrels of crude oil, and spill covered more than one, one, uh, 1,300 miles of coastline, and coastline in which more than 200 miles was heavily oiled. And there are a lot of animals were, were being affected by the oil spill. Next is the 1992, the double hull amendments, which were obligatory for the new, uh, for the new tankers for 5,000 dead weight and above, and above, and built after the 1996 to be fitted with double hulls and or an alternative design permitted by IMO. So, in order to discontinue the use of single hull tankers, a phase out process was adopted. Next is the 1999, and the the Erica accident provoked provoked uh, the adoption of the amendments to Marple in order to hasten the phase out of single hull oil tankers. In 2002, after the sinking of Prestige, the timetable was altered again by additional amendments, which were adopted in. 2003. This and other global measures have helped defend the marine environment um, from oil spills. And lastly, the year 2005, the Annex 6 was added and entered the force. Next are the six annexes of Marple 7378. So, Annex 1, it is the uh, regulations for the prevention of oil pollution 
by oil and entered the force in October 2, 1983, and covers prevention of pollution by oil from operational measures as well as from accidental discharge. And the 1992 amendments of the Annex 1 made it mandatory for the new oil tankers to have double hulls and brought in a phased-in schedule for existing tankers to fit double hulls which were which was subsequently revised in 2001 and 2003 next is the annex 2 regulation for the for the control of pollution by noxi noxious liquid substances in bulk which is entered into force in october 2 1983 and the details the discharge criteria and measures for the control of pollution by noxious liquid substances carried in bulk some 250 substances were evaluated and included in the list appended to the convention and the discharge of the residues is allowed only to reception tax uh, i mean facilities uh, reception facilities and un until certain concentrations and conditions which vary with the category of substance substances are complied compli compiled with and in case no discharge of residues containing noxious substances is permitted within 12 miles of the nearest land. Next is the Annex 3, which is the prevention of pollution by harmful substances carried by the sea in package form and entered into force in July 1, 1992. And a certain general requirements for the issuing of detailed standards on packing, marking, labeling, documentation, stewage, quantity, limitation, exceptions, and notifications. And for the purpose of this annex, harmful, harmful substances are those substances which are identified as marine, pollu uh, marine pollutants in the International Maritime Dangerous Goods Code, which is the IMDG code, or which meet uh, meet the criteria, the criteria of appendix of Annex Three. Annex Four: Prevention of pollution by sewage from ships entered into force in September 27, 2003, contains requirements to control pollution of the sea by sewage, and the, st uh, the discharge of sewage into the sea is prohibited, except when the ship has in operation an approved sewage treatment. Uh, treatment plant and when the ship is discharging com co um, and disinfected sewage using an, uh, an approved system at the distance of more than three nautical miles from the nearest lands. Next is the Annex 5 we're in the um, prevention of pollution by, gar from, by garbage from from ships entered into force in December 31, 1988, deals with different types of garbage and specifies when distances from land and manner in which they may dispose of. And the most um, important measure of the annex is the complete ban imposed of the disposal of the sea of all forms of plastics. And lastly, the, the annex 6, were in the prevention of air pollution from ships entered into force in may 19 2005 it sets limits on sulfur oxide and nitrogen oxide emissions from ships exhaust and prohibits deliberate emission of ozone depleting substances and designated emission and control area sets more stringent standards for the sulfur oxide and nitrogen oxide and particulate matter and a chapter adopted in 2011 covers mandatory technical and operational um Operational energy efficiency efficiency measures aimed at reducing greenhouse gas emissions from ships. And that is all for today. Thank you for listening.